Hey guys, it's Stephen Bradley, MD, your friendly neighborhood anesthesiologist and military physician, here to talk a little bit about Officer Development School. So depending on how you enter the service, there are different training programs that you'll need to go through. Some people come into the military, this is for officers as well as for enlisted. So if you enlist in the military, oftentimes, you know, these are the folks coming straight out of high school. You go to boot camp in the Navy that's in Great Lakes, Illinois. Uh, it's a couple months long and you learn how to march and do stuff and be an active duty service member. For the officers, it's similar but different at the same time. There's different ways you can do ROTC, Reserve Officer Training Candidate Program, I guess. Uh, you can do that in college. You know, some of it's high school and you can go to college and do JROCT or ROCT. That's the pathway that my brother took and at the end of that, I don't believe you need to go through boot camp or officer boot camp. I use the term interchangeably because people usually don't understand the difference. Boot camp is for enlisted people, there's other programs for officers. There is officer candidate school for folks that you may finish college and you want to be a naval officer that's up in um, Rhode Island. You go up there for, I think it's a couple months and you learn how to be a naval officer. You learn how to wear the uniform, there is a physical fitness requirement, you learn how to march and all your military history. For the other folks that join the military, there's two different types of naval officers. There's the line officers, those are your war fighters, the folks that drive ships, that fly planes, that actually work in a war fighting capacity. Then there's a staff corps. So staff corps is your JAG officers, so your lawyers, your chaplains, your medical officers, your nurse corps officers, your medical service corps, MSC, those guys are the phys those guys and gals for the physical therapists, the psychologist, the occupational therapist, all those are medical service corps. And then medical corps are physicians. So for the physicians, at different points in your training is when you would go to officer development school. If you went through the Naval Academy, you don't have to do that because you learn how to be an officer during your four years of training. I don't think you need to go. If you go to USIS, which is military medical school, you may still need to go. And, but if you join using one of the scholarship programs, so there's a couple, there's the HPSB, Health Professional Scholarship Program, there's also the Financial Assistance Program. That's the program that I did. After completing one of those programs, at some point you would need to attend Officer Development School. For me, I joined in the middle of my residency program. Uh, I was just going into my second year, actually, and I joined using this financial assistance program. They gave me some bonus money for three years of residency, and I have a four-year commitment. Since I'd already started residency and I didn't have any time off, I wasn't able to actually attend Officer Development School until I finished residency. So I finished in 2018, actually picked up my first set of orders, moved to Virginia, checked into my command, sat around, took my written boards for anesthesiology, and then went off to officer development school. So this video is about officer development school. For ODS, which is boot camp for medical corps, staff corps officers, it's a running joke that it is knife and fork school. It's not nearly as intense as boot camp or definitely not as intense as a officer candidate school. But basically they wanna teach you how to wear the uniform and how to be a proper naval officer. For us, it was a five week program up in uh, Newport, Rhode Island. It's super uh, nice, pretty ritzy, nice little coastal town in the uh, Northeast. And so you show up on a Sunday, it starts. The orders that I had said show up no later than one o'clock p.m., which is 1300 military time. I usually don't do military time, but 1300, so I showed up at like 12.55, like might be early. Showed up, you move into this dorm, it's called King Hall. They're not the most luxurious of accommodations, but there's definitely worse. It's not open bay birthing. The King Hall itself is probably four or five stories with multiple wings. So you'd be living with your class 
classes are divided up into, the, we had uh, Alpha and Bravo companies, I guess they're called. So that's who you're gonna be living with. For the rooms itself, there were two person birthing. You both had a single size bed, you had a little cubby that you could you know, pack all your hang up clothes in and you had a couple of drawers, like four or five drawers to store all your stuff. You honestly don't need a whole lot to, to wear or to pack during uh, the first couple of weeks of officer development school. So I showed up on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, so later in the afternoon, they had a muster, and the military muster means everybody comes together. It's kind of a huddle, I guess. And the folks that were leading our class showed up. So in officer development school, we had class officers, and they were both lieutenants. And then we had senior enlisted leaders. So we had a senior chief that was uh, responsible for bringing our class along for the five weeks and was responsible for teaching us what we needed to know. So in the military, there's officers and enlisted. Um, enlisted, I guess the senior enlisted folks are the kind of the middle management, I guess, and they have been around for a long time. They're not officers, but they know a lot of the nuts and bolts of how the military works. They know how to work with the enlisted folks as well as with the officers. So they have a, a really special role in mentoring the junior officers. Um, so that's how the class is kind of structured. You have your class leadership. At some point you vote for leadership from within your own ranks. You'll have your division officers and your different collaterals. I didn't know what collateral was when I first went. So collaterals are just like side jobs that you'll have in the military. So I ended up being the admin -o, the administrative officer. They shorten stuff to admin O. And uh, so I worked on people's paperwork. I made sure folks had flights and travel arrangements in and out of officer development school. I helped get people's family members signed up for healthcare benefits and all that. So that was one of my collaterals. But you'll sign up for different collateral duties. There, um, yeah, we had a division officer and an assistant division officer. We had two treasurers. Their job was to collect money, essentially, because you just had to pay for your food, actually. So for enlisted, I don't think they get charged a mess bill, mess is food. But for officers, we pay a mess bill. So the treasurers had to collect money from all the folks that went to ODS. I want to say it was like 800 bucks for the month. I don't recall, but you had to like give them a check or cash or something. So that's what the treasurers did. I'm trying to think of what the other roles were. Um, but yeah, so at some point you vote on that. And what is a day to day experience at Officer Development School like? For me, coming out of residency was super chill. It was um, pretty much like a summer camp. We just hung out, you know. I thought we were gonna have to do a lot of exercise and PT and with the military, like the first week, week and a half, they were actually more concerned about us hurting ourselves. We had to get our physical exams done. That takes a little bit of time. And once you were physically clear, then we could start doing PT. So we went to class for multiple hours a day. You kind of went everywhere as a group. You would form up, you, we lined up in height lines and we marched or walked. It's like the special route step, which is like in between just walking and marching. So we would route step around the campus and go to these different classes on leadership and military history and interpersonal relationship skills. And that's kind of what we were learning the first couple of days. Initially, you know, after that first day, you really aren't allowed to wear your civilian clothes anymore. Even in the dorms, like you could wear, sorry, it's birthing. Yeah, you're not supposed to call it dorms. It's birthing is a specific military terminology. Your bed is your rack, for what that's worth. Um, so you could really only wear like civilian clothes to the shower and back, and you could sleep in whatever you, you need to sleep in. So in the, in, during the day, you would wear Navy PT gear. That first day, they brought everybody down to the uh, uniform shop and they had a prescribed list of items to buy, like a big duffel bag rucksack. You had to buy a glow belt, uh, which is just a little reflective belt so you don't get hit by a car when you're exercising. We had to buy two sets of PT gear for the Navy. It was like a blue, a pair of blue shorts and a, a yellow top. I think it's changed it since. It's like 25 or 35 bucks a piece for the uniforms. Um, so you'll purchase that and that's what you wear for the first couple of days. 
probably the first week, if not two weeks, because at some point they'll also take you to a uniform shop and you'll get fitted for the appropriately sized uniforms. So this was the middle of summer, so we had to buy, they made us buy the brown uniform or the, the khakis. Uh, we had to get fitted for our dress whites, summer whites. Um, some people bought the type threes and some people bought the type threes or the camouflage uniforms. Some people bought those and then some people bought the dress blues as well. Because it was the summer, they didn't make us buy all of the uniforms. So with the military, the uniforms are seasonal and there'll be like orders that come down from the top leadership that's like, hey, it's time to switch into the summer uniform. So you wear your summer whites. All right, it's the fall, we'll wear our dress blues. So because of when we were there, we didn't have to buy all of the uniforms. Fortunately for me, because I checked into my command prior to going to Doctor development school, I hung out with some of the guys in the department, a couple of the super salty um, CRNAs have been out for a while. And they're like, hey man, this is what's gonna happen in officer development school. So I'm spreading the word. They're gonna bring everybody there. You're gonna, you end up buying like $900 to $1,200 worth of uniform items if you buy it all brand new. But at some of the larger bases, there are uniform thrift shops and you can actually go there as long as you have your ID card and you can get the uniforms at an extremely discounted rate. So my buddy, who actually I knew from grad school, he's a intelligence officer in town. He took me to the thrift shop and he showed me what uniforms to get. I definitely appreciate his help because you know it's kind of overwhelming not knowing what you're supposed to be wearing. So I bought a set of the brown uniform. I think they were like 10 or 15 bucks for the pants and like 10 or 15 bucks for the shirt. So I bought two of those. I bought some whites, some summer whites, just a white uniform with um, short sleeves. And I didn't buy the shoes as of yet. I'm trying to think of what else I bought. And then you, you take the uniform and I was able to get it tailored because it's supposed to fit just right. So I took it to the, the Naval Exchange, which is our like convenience store. Sorry, so I took the uniforms to the Naval Exchange, got everything fitted. So I was set for probably 60% of my uniform and I got out of there like pretty cheap. They made us buy, uh, one day it was like pouring down rain, so we had to buy this trench coat, which was like 150 bucks that we only wore like twice. It was a little annoying. So it's kind of, um, and it's kind of rushed and high pressure and I'll try to get you to, to sign up for this military star card, which is just a special like credit card to use at the military, uh, shopping mall so some people signed up for that but fortunately i you know just use my regular credit card so i had to open up a new line of credit so you get your uniforms it takes a while to get them tailored and then you'll get your uniforms you'll have a dress code inspection all along the the way you're memorizing and learning stuff um, different creeds and oaths and uh, the sailor's creed and your oath of office and there's um, like just different things that you gotta memorize, just rote memory, which I'm not great at doing because if you come out of medical school, you know, the rote memory stuff was in medical school and then in residency, you know, you start to just like learn stuff and actually like rote memory is not something I do well with, so whatever. So you do a dress code or a uniform inspection and you gotta like make sure your uniform's perfect, um, cut all the little, loose strings off your uniform, make sure it's ironed appropriately and it fits right. And I think everybody had one ribbon because you just get like a participation ribbon for joining um, the name Miss Casey, but you get a ribbon, everybody has a ribbon and it has to measure it out and make sure it sits right. So they go over your um, uniform and you stand at attention and they inspect you and then they ask you questions and you're supposed to maintain like military bearings what they call it where you just look straight ahead like this thousand yard stare and you don't make any faces and you can't move your eyes so they, they do that um, and then you pass or if you don't pass you got to remediate stuff there's also a swim test at some point once you're able to do physical uh, fitness and PT uh, they'll take you down to the pool and you gotta do a swim test. First, I think it's just like a practice run, but the swim test is really just, you, you jump off a diving board, like you're abandoning a ship, and then you gotta swim, I don't know, 100 yards or something that was, was not terrible. What else? Oh, so then, now that you can PT, 
every morning you wake up at, I don't know, 5.30 or 6, you go out to the track and you, you do calisthenics, you jump in jacks, all that stuff. And uh, then you run laps. And it's all getting you ready for the PT test, which is towards the end. Because you have to pass the Navy's physical fitness standard. And basically it's a time that the, when I went through ODS, you had to do for two minutes the most, as many push-ups as you could do as many sit-ups as you could do, or crunches, as many crunches as you could do. And then you had to run a mile and a half. And the cutoffs and scale differs depending on your age and your sex, uh, your sexual orientation. So for me, I had to run like a mile and a half in 11 minutes to like get the highest mark. I think I had to do like 80 or 90, like 80 push-ups and 90 sit-ups in the two minutes. So eventually we did that, that was cool. And we went to some more lectures. There was like a ceremony for 9-11 because that, that date passed while we were there. So we planned and orchestrated a ceremony for that there. And then we're just getting ready for the graduation um, ceremony when all of our families come up and we have to march and step and do everything at the same time and follow orders. And it's, it's pretty cool once you see it all come together. So all in all, like it was a good experience. Oh, um, so Liberty. So Liberty means like vacation or freedom or when you can actually leave the base. So um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, so the, at first you're like on lockdown. You can't go anywhere. Um, like even like you're on this little base in Rhode Island and they'll tell you like you can only go to like half the base. There's a gym that's maybe a mile away that you can walk to, maybe half a mile away that you can walk to and exercise, but at first you can't even go there. They won't let you exercise at all <clears throat> after that first weekend. The next week they usually lighten it up and say you're, you have a uh, one base liberty where you can go to the gym, you can go to other places over the weekend. And they still tell you it's like on a Friday afternoon what your liberty parameters are for the weekend. There is uh, some duty or watch standing, like we call it, you know, call when you're in residency. But there is uh, some duty requirements in your schedule where you'll have to come in and stand watch for like two hours or four hours. There's one watch where you like rove around, you just walk around outside to make sure that nobody's up to anything. Um, and the other watch is just standing guard in the dorm room itself and checking IDs for people that come in. So if you're not doing that, then you know you can go and enjoy Liberty. I think the third weekend we were there, we had Liberty out in town. You could actually leave town and get a meal. You had to be in uniform though. We'd done our khakis uniform inspection. So we go out in town, but you had to wear a uniform. And the last weekend that we were there, we had uh, out of town Liberty, where we were allowed to actually go to, they had like a mileage restriction, but we could go to Boston. I went to Boston and my girlfriend flew up and we spent the weekend together in Boston. We could not go to New York. New York was too far. Uh, the, the caveat of the rules, they make them up every time depending on the class. So for us, like we were supposed to stay in uniform, I guess for the whole weekend which was the khaki uniform, which I thought was kind of weird that we're gonna be walking around a major American city in this military working uniform. I didn't really think it was like serious, serious. So me and my girlfriend went, we did our own thing. But I guess a lot of the other folks in class stayed together one big clump and they like went to a Red Sox game and they were all wearing their uniform and that's cool. Except for some people that decided to change out of the uniform and they were wearing civilian clothes and then they got reported and they got in a lot of trouble. They had to do like some extra push-ups and sit-ups and they got questioned about their integrity and all of their stuff. So it was a really big deal. So they're serious. Whenever you're at ODS, if they talk about wearing the uniform to Boston, they're pretty serious. So yeah, don't, you know, take, take from that what you will. So that was my experience at Officer Development School. As a medical corps officer, like, it was helpful to learn a lot of it is not applicable to my day-to-day -day life. They teach you a lot about how to work with enlisted folks. And, and from my perspective, I do what I can to help mentor the sailors that, that work 
with me and, and under me for lack of a better term. Uh, but you know, I've been in for a short period of time. I'm not privy to all the intricacies of navigating the Navy and how they promote and all this other stuff. So I, I don't know, I can't really help them that much, unfortunately, but I do what I can. And that's kind of the purpose of Oscar Development School to kind of give you a little bit of a, of a briefing and on how you should, should act. It was helpful, it was chill, um, nothing to be worried about, especially if you've finished medical school or if you finished residency, like, like it was honestly like a nice vacation, if you will. So nothing to be worried about. It's gonna be a good time. Enjoy it, learn what you can. And uh, yeah, let me know how it goes. Let me know if this video helped you at all. Leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you wanna hear more of. I'm gonna continue to kind of document and highlight my time in the Navy and different things that I didn't know and that I've learned along the way and I think may be helpful to other folks that are coming behind us. So thanks for listening, um, stay tuned.